Hi, I'm James West. This is Midas Letter Money. We're coming to you live from the Market One Media Interview Pavilion at the Canadian Investment Conference in Vancouver, British Columbia. My guest today is Thomas Braun. Thomas is the president and CEO of Verisante Technology Inc. Trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol VRS and trades in the United States under the symbol VRSEF. Thomas, thanks for joining us today. Thanks. Thomas, let's talk a bit about the core technology and how important it is to the survival rate of sufferers of lung cancer and other internal cancers, but lung cancer in particular in China is a massive problem. That's right. It's actually a huge problem in uh, many parts of the world, uh, but in Asia, particularly Japan, South Korea, and China, those are three really lucrative markets. In China itself, they now have approximately one-third of the world's lung cancer fatalities are in China. So about one and a half million people a year are dying of lung cancer worldwide. One-third of that in China. Wow. Um, they've got a real epidemic problem there. And you can attribute that to living in a toxic environment. If anybody who's been to some of these highly industrialized cities in China yeah, knows, uh, you're there for a few hours and you develop a cough. Wow. Um, and then the smoking. They, they basically are at the, the point where we were in the 1950s, where just about every man smokes and a large percentage of the women, and they're smoking stronger cigarettes, and they're inhaling deeper, and they're chain smoking. So it's, a, it's really an epidemic over there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a huge opportunity, a commercial opportunity, because they've got 21,000 hospitals. China just surpassed Japan as the biggest consumer of medical devices in Asia, hmm. worldwide second only to the United States. And on their present trajectory, within 10 years, they will be a bigger market for both pharmaceuticals and medical devices than the United States. They will be the most important market in the world. For this pro product, I think they are the most important market in the world because lung cancer is still on the rise there. They're, they have a thirst for new technologies from the West in China. Wow. And uh, they have an open mind to adopt new technologies. And because of the crisis they're facing, they're willing to take risks and try new things out, more so than um, doctors in, in Europe and North America who are very conservative and don't really want to change a, a whole lot, you know, sure. co in comparison. Okay, so what hurdles do you have to cross in order to get this uh, into China and into the United States medical systems? Well, into the United States, you would have to get FDA approval. That's, that's uh, the same thing in China. They call it the SFDA, the state FDA. And in China, they actually have recently changed their regulations to uh, fast track new innovative technologies. So if you have something that's not a Me Too product, like another glucose monitor or another ultrasound or whatever, if it's, if it's something new and unique like ours, which is the only one in the world, they fast track that. Uh, there's also recently a, a federal task force started in China on lung cancer. So it's become a priority of the central government to deal with this. So uh, we would have to get SFDA approval. We're probably looking at a clinical study at about three hospitals in China. It, the cost would maybe be, fi uh, uh, I was going to say, $200 per patient. And you might have 500 patients at each hospital. Mm -hmm. So maybe $300,000. It's cheap to do a clinical study in China sure. compared to the United States. And is that your plan? That's the plan. And we're actually in negotiations with a couple of different um, strategic, potential strategic partners in China who would finance that, manage it for us, manage it through the SFDA procedure, and then do the distribution and marketing over in China. Okay, so why don't we run through some of the major mega cap companies in the world who might be interested in acquiring Verisante? Mm -hmm. Can you give me some examples of who might be wanting to looking to buy you? Sure. The the most obvious ones are companies that are already in the endoscopic equipment market. Although our first product is for skin cancer, when you look at all the different applications of this platform technology, only one of them is skin cancer. The rest are endoscopic. Okay. So it's an accessory to any brand of endoscope. It will work with Olympus, Pentax, Carl Stortz, whoever. So that is a market that right now is about a $28 billion a year market, the endoscopic equipment market. Wow. So it's huge. And it's growing at a compound annual growth rate of about 6%. By 2018, it's going to be almost $40 billion a year. 
Wow. So I would say companies that are already in the endoscopic equipment market would see this as something that fits in their existing sales channels. So they already are doing business in over 100 countries. They have thousands of salespeople. They'll understand that in their hands, this is worth a lot more money. And this is a product that they can be selling for um, upwards of $100,000. So, so what it's going to generate particular? some real revenue. Okay, well, what company in particular if, is the best case example of an acquirer for well, you? Well, I don't know if there is a particular company because it could be um, J&J Ethicon, Boston okay, J &J Scientific, Epicon. Stryker, let's, let's talk about Covidian. J &J. Okay, J&J Ethicon, yeah. for example. Yeah. Where do they trade? J&J Ethicon is a subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson. Oh, okay. So it's, you know, one of the biggest companies in the world. And what do they um, do in the, in the space? They, they make um, endoscopic equipment and endoscopic accessories. Uh, I would say the most recent acquisitions in this space that I would point to would be uh, Covidian in 2012. They made a move where they bought a company, it was an Israeli startup company called Super Dimension for $300 million. Oh, when that was that? Company just uh, 2012. Okay. And that company makes a catheter that extends Ouch. the warning, the working channel of the endoscope. Right. That's all. Right. No diagnostic value at all. Okay. Um, they're extending the working channel of an endoscope. Our fiber optic probe, so, you know, just to explain to your viewers, it's the same platform technology, but for the internal cancers, we're using a very thin fiber optic probe that's mm -hmm. 1.8 millimeters in diameter that goes down the working channel of the endoscope. Okay. This is the same channel that they're putting down biopsy tools, electric knives, and other things they use to do surgery. So it's an st industry standard. It'll work with all brands. So what Covidian bought was a company, an Israeli company, startup company for 300 million that is a catheter. You put down that tube that comes out the end that just extends that working channel so that when you get into the lung, you can go beyond what's called the endobronchial airway. Right. So as you get smaller and smaller in the branches of the lung, uh, the, the endoscope can only go maybe two generations. Beyond that, then this would come out and it would extend your reach by a few inches. Sure. There's, so there's an example of mm -hmm. a company that's on the move, right. um, making acquisitions and, uh, you know, like many of these companies, they're cash rich and pipeline poor. Hmm. They get their new products by acquiring startup companies. And on, on the other hand, we have a very rich pipeline that gives them multiple shots on goal should they acquire us. So would you say that's an exit strategy for the investors of Verisante, or one potentially? Well, it is. And the thing is that uh, an, another exit strategy will be, of course, just selling their stock in the market because we've got so many big milestones coming up. If the Aura gets FDA approval within 12 months, there's no question that our market valuation is going to go up tremendously when that catalytic event occurs. Okay. So there will be lots of opportunities along the way depending on the investment horizon of the individual investor. Great, Thomas. Let's leave it there. We'll come back and check on your progress in a few months. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, well, thanks for having me. My guest today was Thomas Braun. Thomas is the president and CEO of Verisante Technology Inc. Trades on the TSX Venture under the symbol BRS and trades in the United States under the symbol BRSEF. I'm James West. This has been another Midas Letter Money production coming to you live from the Market One Media Interview Pavilion at the Canadian Investment Conference in Vancouver, British Columbia.